Happy Wednesday, August 1st. Ken Shreve with you on TFNN. Welcome to Breakout Investing, now uh, daily on TFNN from 3 to 4 Eastern. The number to use to get through is um, 877-927-6648. If you can't listen to the show live, be sure to head over to iTunes. You can get it as a get Breakout Investing as a podcast, and you can listen to all TFNN programming if you're not on your PC. You have your handheld device uh, with you, Android device, um, iPhone, just type in tfnn.mobi in your smartphone browser and you can get the stream that way as well. And uh, don't forget about Tiger TV, also on the homepage of tfnn.com. You can not only listen to the show live, but you can look at charts right along with me on Tiger TV. Channel 1, the show is carried live. Channel 13, it's archived and Tiger TV is now viewable on your handheld device as well. Well, a lot of uh, headlines in the in the market today. Um, interesting, this uh, story about night uh, night capital. I have to I have to attest. I have one stock in my model portfolio where I was watching it uh, trade at the open, and it was I mean it was down two, up two, down one, up two. It was just completely insane. But um, turns out that night capital, which is uh, an electronic trading firm that handles a lot of uh, uh, daily orders on the uh, New York Stock Exchange that uh, there was some sort of uh, technology issue that affected some 150 NYSE stocks that caused uh, unusual price action. I'm not sure it's been uh, sorted out yet, but um, you can see a name like um, Radio Shack was um, affected here, RSH. You can see big uh, trading swing today hit a high of 367, a low of 265. Um, there were other stocks affected as well. Quicksilver uh, Resources, uh, KWK. Take a look at Quicksilver. You can see a huge intraday uh, trading range here as well. Uh, hit a high of 605, a low of 441, uh, recently trading around $4.51. And then, uh, you know, Watson Pharmaceuticals, which is a current holding in my Ultimate Growth Stocks model portfolio, a stock that's been performing uh, very well. You can see it uh, went down to its 50 day moving average. Now it's trading all the way up at its uh, session high, up about 1.4% today to 78.92. But it uh, came down to its 50 day moving average but a big intraday uh, trading range in Watson Pharmaceuticals. So uh, not, uh, not great news for Knight Capital. This is a publicly traded uh, company, and the Knight trades under the ticker symbol K KCG. And you can see the stock is just getting absolutely obliterated today. Has lost more than 25% of its value just in one day, down $2.66 to $7.67. So... Um, the volume on the New York Stock Exchange is tracking uh, higher than what we saw uh, Tuesday, but uh, it's probably going to be skewed a little bit. NASDAQ volume is tracking uh, pretty close to the 1.75 billion shares that we saw uh, yesterday. All right, let's check in on the markets. Uh, we had the Fed announcement uh, come out about 55 minutes ago. We'll get into that in just a little bit. Uh, not much new there. But um, overall, the market's hanging in there pretty well, I must say, considering it was uh, really not much uh, new news from the Fed. The NASDAQ composite right now down 7.5 points. Call it a quarter of 1% to 29.32. It is working on three straight uh, declines here. Uh, the NASDAQ composite is, and uh, you know, trading near a session low today as well, but uh, um, still not, uh, not a terrible performance up to this point. Again, volume, uh, not much volume in the NASDAQ today. Should be uh, coming in pretty close to what we saw yesterday, which was 1.75 billion shares. Uh, S&P 500, let's check in on this uh, benchmark index. Uh, uh, up a little bit now, trading right in the middle uh, p portion of its trading range today, up um, fractionally to uh, 1379 and we'll check in on the Dow as well. We'll see that the Dow is uh, mostly unchanged down a little more than three points to 13,005. So um, yeah, there was a lot of speculation about what the Fed was going to say. The policy statement came out at 2.15 uh, Eastern. Uh, they really didn't say uh, anything new at all. And uh, on the one hand, that's not surprising. Um, there's a perception that the Fed is probably going to do something in uh, September. Obviously, the Fed's going to be looking at the uh, jobs report this uh, Friday. We're working on uh, a few months in a row now, a very disappointing uh, jobs growth. But uh, the Fed did not 
uh, feel any uh, need to act uh, at this point. There really wasn't any, um, not much uh, change in Fed language uh, either. So it was pretty much what we heard uh, the last time around. They uh, stuck with their um, commitment to keep the Fed funds rate low through 2014. There were some that thought they may extend that out to 2015. But again, you have to remember the um, first reading on second quarter gross domestic product that we just saw actually came in better than expected. Remember, the estimate was for 1.2% uh, uh, growth, and it actually came in at 1.5% one, uh, one growth. So, um, so we'll see. Um, we'll we'll see how that uh, how that all shakes out. All right. Um, 877-927-6648. Let's uh, go to Orange County, California, talk to Garo, who has a question about, uh, looks like, DF, Dean Foods. How are you doing today, Garo? How are you, sir? I'm fine, thank you. All right. Uh, regarding uh, Dean Foods, would you buy it? If you buy it, where would you buy it? Well, you know, Garo, my, my specialty is, uh, you probably know, growth stocks. So, you know, a, a company like Dean Foods that has fallen from, you know, 17 down to about 12, right. it, it's, it's, it's trying to make a stand here at its 200-day uh, moving average. So you probably, I mean, for, the, for a value investor, you're probably at a, a low-risk uh, entry point with a, you know, stop under underneath maybe $11.75 or something like that. But uh, in terms of if you were to buy it here, yeah, it looks like a low-risk entry point. A lot of bad news has been priced in here. It's been trading the past uh, week or two right around that, you know, $12, $12.5 price level. Um, but like where it would go from here, it, it's going to be it's going to be a long road back because there was a lot of heavy volume selling on the way down. That creates overhead supply, which means that as it as it works its way higher, if it's going to do that, it's going to face selling pressure on the way back up from you know people looking to sell and, and get back to even. So where it goes from here, if it goes higher, I, I wouldn't even be able to put a, a, a price target on it. Um, like I said, it's firming up nicely right at that $12 level. It's trading around $12.19 right now. But this is a stock that's really not, you know, not in my in in my roundhouse because I tend to look at uh, you know stocks that are showing relative price strength, not relative weakness, like Dean Foods. Yes, yes. That's all I want. I wanted to hear, sir. That's all I wanted to hear. Okay. Thank well, you, thank you very thank much, you sir. So much. Thank you. Always appreciate the call. Take care. All right, Garo from uh, Orange County. Yeah, I mean, listen, a lot of uh, stock goes from 17 down to 12 bucks a share. It looks like it's on sale, but people forget that you know, in a, in a situation like Dean Foods, you know, there's a, a lot of heavy volume selling on the way down here. So there were big investors that were exiting this stock, and yes, it is kind of firming up here and at its 200-day uh, moving average, firming up at long-term support. So. Um, you know, you could you could take a you could take a chance here and say, well, twelve dollars is the floor here. It can't go underneath that, but you don't want to keep a, a, a tight um, a tight stop uh, if you were to to do that. All right. So in terms of uh, the markets. Uh, so far, pretty muted response. But <clears throat> excuse me. Tomorrow we've got the European Central Bank, Mario Draghi and uh, company. There was a lot of rhetoric last week that Draghi was going to do everything he can to defend the euro and the eurozone. Uh, is it a lot of talk, or will there be action? So I think the 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 market obviously will be listening very closely early Thursday, um, and you know, hopefully, hopefully there will be something concrete that comes out of the ECB meeting tomorrow. And uh, again, how the market responds to it is uh, is anyone's uh, guess. I've got some long exposure to the market. Of course, I'd like to see my longs uh, continue to um, continue to work. And um, you know, we'll, we'll see we'll see what happens. But I've heard technicians out there make a make a pretty good bear case, and you know, I've heard others make a pretty good uh, bull case here as well. So once again. It's sort of like, you know, one hand on the buy trigger and uh, one hand on the the sell trigger. Tough to, you know, tough to get a feel for uh, what what's going on in this uh, market. But that really has been the case for uh, for some time now. But uh, so far, a muted response uh, by the major averages. Uh, interesting data today from B of A Merrill Lynch. It really didn't get a lot of play in the mainstream media, but uh, B of A Merrill Lynch. Um, data showed that sell-side strategists are as bearish as they've been in 27 years. So B of A has been collecting data 
for its sell side consensus indicator for 27 years and this indicator is at its lowest level uh, since data have been uh, collected. It fell to 43.9 in July. So it shows you there's a lot of sell side bearishness out there. Of course that can often be a contrarian indicator on Wall Street which means it's time to be uh, bullish. So interesting data and we'll, uh, we'll see We'll see how the market uh, reacts tomorrow. And, of course, the jobs report on Friday. We've got two days of very, very important headlines for the market. I said yesterday that we'll probably have a pretty good idea of where this market wants to go by the end of the week. Taking a look at some uh, downside uh, movers today, stocks um, under under pressure. Take a look at uh, Priceline, looking very vulnerable. It's coming out with earnings uh, next week. Stock underperforming the market broadly again, back underneath its 50-day moving average, down 2.4% to 6.4584. 6.4584. Priceline does not have a problem delivering good bottom line and top line growth, um, and another quarter of strong growth is expected. Uh, next week, but this is another former leader that looks quite vulnerable in this um, in this market. All right, eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Going to next go out to uh, Medford, Massachusetts. Talk to uh, Bill, who has a question about uh, FLS. If memory serves, that's uh, is that uh, FlowServe, I believe. Yeah, FlowServe. You got it. How you doing, Bill? I'm doing great. How are you? Oh, not bad. Not bad at all. Yeah, I was looking at this uh, stock. Looks like to me it it uh, wants to break out of that long base starting back in uh, February. Yeah, it's in a it's in a it's in a great base, and uh, it's in a big uh, big long base. I'm looking at a, a daily chart now in uh, in, in Tiger uh, TV flow serve right now, trading down 37 cents to 119.61. I'm going to flip over and just look at a weekly chart here, as so we can see the base um, the base that you're. Uh, talking about here, and yeah, it's a base that started in uh, in late uh, February, and uh, you know, it actually just recently broke out from what I would uh, consider a cup with handle pattern. You know, that uh, pattern that uh, IBD uh, coined, uh, the swing point was 117.92. It's at 119.34. So, you know, it, it, it's still within buying range here um, under a fair amount of accumulation. Fundamentals okay. Sales growth decelerating a little bit in, in recent quarters. So it's not, uh, it's not perfect in terms of its fundamentals, but it's a good high-quality name that's, um, you know, that, that, that broke out, and it's, uh, it's still within... Uh, still within buying range. Do you do you own it, Bill? Are you looking to buy it or? No, I'm just. It was on my radar, and I saw it broke out. So I'm uh, I'm thinking about getting in right here. Yeah, I mean the 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 good thing is is that it's not extended. You're not chasing here. You know, you're buying a stock that's still within buying range. So uh, you know, give it a give it a shot and uh, have your stop in there. And uh, hopefully, this market's going to continue to move uh, continue to move higher. That should help the breakout. All right, Ken, thanks a lot. All right, Bill, thank you. Take care. All right, folks, headed into the uh, first break. Uh, thanks very much for tuning in to uh, Breakout Investing. We'll be back in about four minutes. Ken Shreve with you. Stick, uh, stick with me. We'll be right back. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows. Plus, see all the charts as they happen live during those shows and have access to archives of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, Kate Stalter, David White, Larry Pesamento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on Chinese stocks, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary 
prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Millionaires are made every day. The fact is, living your dreams is possible. Someone, somewhere is going to get rich. My recommendation is, let that be you. Each day, someone is making the decision to better themselves and creating a plan to fulfill their financial dreams. Let that be you. The key to turning dreams into reality is to take massive action. Let that be you. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Master Show with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN. And I can help you with your journey to great wealth. I'll show you how to create the ultimate financial edge, a set of tools, insights, and strategies that are part of my daily newsletter service, Mastering Probability. You'll have direct access to me by phone, email, and my private library of trading and investing secrets for 30 days with an unconditional money-back guarantee. I'll take your trading to the next level. Click on my name, Steve Rhodes, on the homepage of TFNN.com and turn your dreams into reality. Mastering Probability, folks. Let that be you. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. This segment is brought to you by Goldfields. For more information, just click the Goldfields banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks, to Breakout Investing on uh, TFNN. Yeah, I just got off the phone with Bill from Medford, Mass., talking about uh, FlowServe. Uh, we actually had earnings from... Uh, FlowServe yesterday, I believe. They make uh, flow control products for the oil and gas uh, industries. Uh, the bottom line and top line results were better than expected. The company did issue a pretty good outlook, and Bill was looking at this as a uh, technical breakout, and it, it absolutely is. Now, uh, if you've been paying attention to the market in recent weeks, it's obviously been a mixed environment for technical breakouts. But FlowServe uh, did have a, a cup with handle uh, breakout uh, yesterday over a swing point of 117.91, and at 119.62, it's uh, it's still within uh, range here. It's not uh, this is not an example of chasing a stock that's extended in price because to me it looks like it still could be in the early stages of uh, breaking out of a, a base here. Of course. You know, what we're dealing with here is Mr. Market. How is the market going to respond to what the ECB has to say uh, tomorrow? It's really kind of a 50-50 game, isn't it? it um you know, we could we could go up sharply. We we could come in. So, uh, and then of course the jobs report on Friday. So obviously some risk taking on new positions today, uh, tomorrow ahead of um, you know ahead of some potentially market moving uh, headline. But all in all, flow serves uh, breakout doesn't look uh, doesn't look bad at all here. And you know it still has its uh, prior high of 122.45 uh, to contend with. That's the high it hit back here in uh, February. So all in all, uh, not not too bad. Flow serve, um, uh, not a bad break out there. All right, uh, yeah, we mentioned uh, Priceline. A lot of uh, growth names still looking vulnerable here. That's uh, sort of a, a good argument for the bear case. Uh, Priceline underperforming the market again. Let's take a look at shares of MasterCard under uh, under some pressure today, but actually the stock is uh, bouncing back a little bit, still down about 1.5% to 4.29.73. Gave up its 50-day moving average uh, briefly uh, today, but it is uh, trading up near its session high, still down on the day and heavy volume. 
earnings uh, came out, and uh, they were they were disappointing. The bottom line growth was okay, up 19% from a year ago to 565 a share. Sales up 9% to 1.8 billion, but that was a little bit below expectations of uh, just underneath 1.9 billion. So. MasterCard has a little more exposure uh, to Europe than uh, Visa does. Um, that's the one thing you, that, that differentiates uh, both of these uh, card companies. But um, yeah, MasterCard not in great, uh, not a great chart here. Uh, this is a chart that tells me that uh, this one does not look like it has uh, potential uh, to be a leader going forward. Just by looking at recent price and volumes, kind of buying demand uh, drying up, and again the earnings report. Uh, Pretty pretty big uh, revenue miss there uh, today. Taking a look at shares of Visa, you can see much different uh, chart holding nicely above its 50-day moving average, still showing relative price strength um, in this market. So Visa uh, probably gets my vote over Mastercard at uh, at this point. Another uh, former high flyer growth name uh, under pressure today. Good bottom line growth, but uh, it doesn't matter with shares of uh, Sourcefire trying like heck to hold on to its 200-day moving average here. Sourcefire, a maker of network security hardware and software. Um, you know, earnings up 100% from a year ago. Sales up 39% to 50.6 million, but their outlook wasn't uh, wasn't that great and. Uh, Boy, the stock is just getting crushed today, down $8.42, uh, down about 16.5% to 42.63. So uh, yet another stock here, even though it's holding above long-term support, uh, Sourcefire having a, a rough day today. Speaking of these uh, former leaders um, rolling over, who do we have here? We've got, uh, you know, Priceline not looking great. We've got CMG that, that fell apart recently on uh, on. Uh, Weak earnings. Let's take a look at Monster Beverage, a stock that just it's, it's it just doesn't quite want to die, but it really is looking vulnerable here. Monster uh, underperforming the market today, down one and a half percent to sixty five forty three. Now Monster comes out with earnings next week on August eighth. That's going to be actually one week from today. So next Wednesday, August 8th, we'll see earnings from Monster. This is, uh, of course, the maker of the Monster Energy Drink, used to be known as Hansen Natural. Uh, earnings expected to be up 36% from a year ago to $0.61 cents a share. <clears throat> Excuse me. With sales up 29% to just under 600 million, um, this is another stock that is in a late stage move here. Let's uh, just take a look at a weekly chart for Monster, and we'll see just the incredible uh, price run it's made. Is it possible that Monster forms a base here and eventually retests its, um, you know, former high around 80, you know, 82 bucks a share? Uh, it's possible, but. Um, this is another former leader that looks vulnerable in uh, in the current market environment. All right, before we head into break, let's uh, check in on uh, oil up one percent today to eighty-eight dollars and ninety-one cents a barrel. We had gold down six dollars and eighty cents, four tenths of one percent to sixteen oh three seventy an ounce, and the U.S. dollar index uh, higher today to eighty-three oh six. That's up forty-two ticks or half a percent. Market hanging in there pretty well despite the strong dollar. We'll be right back, folks. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. 
Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. Kate Stalter's exciting newsletter, Low Price Leaders, has just launched and now is a great time to get a two-week free trial. Every Wednesday afternoon, Kate sends out her weekly newsletter to her subscribers where she focuses on small cap stocks with market caps under $2 billion, as well as low priced equities with share prices ranging from $5 to $12. Kate tracks a variety of stocks with a combination of strong technical support and solid fundamentals. Many of the stocks featured will be recent IPOs. These new Newer issues are often some of the biggest price gainers in the market and provide an excellent opportunity for substantial gains if timed correctly. You can catch Kate Stalter live on Tiger TV with her small cap roundup every Tuesday and Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time and visit TFNN.com right now to get your two-week free trial to her brand new newsletter, Low Priced Leaders, while locking in the low introductory monthly rate of only $37.50 per month, almost a 50% discount. Act now. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. This segment is brought to you by Direction Shares. To learn more about technical tools for the sophisticated active investor, hit the Direction Shares banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks, to Breakout Investing. And, um, you know, Tom O'Brien and I often joke about this deviant um, you know, market and a Fed that's supposed to do at least something. They don't do anything, and here we have the markets uh, trying to, you know, come back and close uh, green today. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ uh, composite here with a uh, little less than 30 minutes left to go in Wednesday session. NASDAQ composite now just down four and a half points to 29.35. 29.35 for the NASDAQ composite. The S&P 500 is now in positive territory. Look at that, up one point to uh, 1380. And uh, the Dow at last check was also slightly positive on the day. So we'll see where we close here. But uh, the Dow right now up about 12 and a half points to 13,021. So stocks uh, trying to end with some uh, strength here ahead of the ECB meeting uh, tomorrow and also the, of course, jobs report on Friday. Let's check in on the TLT. This is a long bond fund called the iShares Barclays 20-plus year Treasury bond fund. Um, near its lows trying to you know came down to its 50-day moving average last friday there were some big sellers in the tlt this is another you know potential bull catalyst here if money you know starts coming out of the bond market uh, there's a good chance it could find its way into stocks so the tlt has not broken down yet came down close to its 50-day moving average on friday uh, still holding above the line but tlt under some pressure today 
down a dollar thirteen nine tenths of a percent to one twenty eight fifty seven near its uh, uh, near its lows and that might be you know one reason why the market is uh, stock market is uh, holding up okay here into the uh, close. We have some uh, car sales data today. I don't really follow the car makers uh, that much, but uh, interesting to see Chrysler uh, post a 13% increase in July sales. They sold a little over 126,000 vehicles in the uh, quarter, the uh, Chrysler 200 mid midsize sedan and the Dodge Journey full size crossover um, set sales records in uh, July. Their Ram pickup is also doing well. General Motors, a 6% decline in July sales, but uh, Cadillac still doing well. Sales increased 21% there. And uh, Ford Motor. They said Wednesday that uh, July sales fell 4%. They sold almost 174,000 uh, cars in July. Ford Fusion economy car continues to do well. Uh, best July ever with sales up 21%. And the Ford Explorer had its best July sales gain since uh, 2006. So car makers kind of out with uh, mixed, uh, mixed results. Um, economic data tomorrow. We're going to take a look at the ISM Manufacturing Index. Um, uh, actually, that wasn't tomorrow. That's uh, today. The ISM Manufacturing Index came in at 49.8, mostly in line with expectations, maybe just a little bit uh, below. Uh, that compared to June's reading of 49.7, so up just a, a fraction there. The ADP employment change, you know, people want to find correlations between this uh, this private payroll number and the, the jobs report that comes two days later, and there's really, you know, no correlation that I can see. Uh, better than expected reading from ADP earlier today, uh, private payrolls up 163,000. The estimate was for growth of 125,000, so uh, we'll see if that translates into good news for the uh, jobs report on uh, Friday. And uh, tomorrow, weekly jobless claims, uh, they're expected to rise a little bit to 365,000. Uh, Challenger job cut data tomorrow and factory orders for June will also be out Thursday. And finally, non-farm payrolls expected to be up 100,000. Uh, so we will see. Some nice uh, earnings reports today. Let's take a look at uh, a ticker symbol here that uh, PZZA, PZZA, well, that is uh, Papa John's and tell you what, at one point today, Papa John's was looking super strong, but uh, um, Long's have to be disappointed with uh, its price performance today. I mean, nice earnings, big volume, big jump out of the gate. Papa John's hit an intraday high of 56.41. It's now trading at 51. 96. Uh, still up 1.9%, but um, really looks like a heavy volume reversal here. Earnings... Um, you know, at Papa John's, we're up 30% from a year ago to 61 cents a share. Sales up 9% to 318.6 million. They've got those quirky, that quirky ad campaign. You see, you see that guy on TV all the time, and um, yeah, pizza's okay. Uh, it's been a very, very strong performing stock. Actually, had a, a good, um, a good breakout today. But uh, breakout, another example of a breakout that's just not. You know, having a hard time getting going here because uh, after early strength, Papa John's is now trading near its uh, session low. Breakout over 52.97. It is now trading underneath um, that swing point. Uh, again, trading at 51.96. Let's take a look at uh, CATM. This has been a very, very, very steady performer. They operate a, a network of uh, ATMs. Kind of a wild day of trading in Cartronics as well. Intraday low of 29.50, a high of 31.40. Uh, trading up near its high at uh, 3101, uh, unchanged on the day. So wild uh, trading range, but uh, stock continues to show relative price strength. They, um, again, operate a network of ATMs, not only in the U.S., but also in uh, Mexico and I believe the U.K. as well. Earnings up 12% to 38 cents a share. Sales up 30%. Good top line growth. 192 million in revenue they did in the uh, quarter. So technically a strong stock here, still holding above its 50-day uh, moving average. Uh, very well-run company here. Uh, so also take a look at www. This is uh, web.com group. Uh, web.com group. They provide website publishing uh, and management software to uh, their niche is kind of small and medium-sized businesses. Uh, this stock was mentioned in a in one 
one of these uh, short, uh, I think a short selling report or something. You saw a big, big decline for the stock last week. It's starting to work its way back, but still underneath its 50 day moving average. Web.com Group uh, recently, or last year, I should say, bought Network uh, Solutions, and that, uh, that uh, acquisition continues to uh, be integrated nicely and has resulted in excellent top line growth in recent quarters for Web.com. Earnings up 46% to 38 cents a share. Sales were up 134% to 99 million. So still uh, growing the top line by triple digits in uh, recent quarters. Uh, but, you know, a bit of a broken stock here. So uh, it remains to be seen if uh, this is going to eventually go on and form a, a proper base. But uh, not, uh, you know, a stock that was at $19.50 not too long ago, now trading around sixteen forty-five. I would uh, stop short of saying that it's on sale here uh, despite nice earnings and a, a nice move for the stock. It is still trading underneath its 50-day moving average, which could be problematic. Uh, the 50-day line for Web.com Group is at um, 16, uh, 17.31, and uh, stock was recently trading around 16.45. So lo technical damage done to Web.com Group in recent days. Uh, nice earnings uh, today, but the stock uh, does not look to me like it's uh, out of the woods yet. Uh, Ultimate Software Group, a real strong performer in the market. Another reversal here. Um, you know, you tend to see price action like this when there's not a lot of money coming in from the sidelines. And that, may, that may seem obvious, but uh, you know, for, for, for breakouts, heavy volume moves to really work, you need, you need sustained buying demand throughout the day. You need sustained buying demand at the open. You need sustained buying demand midway through the session. You need sustained buying demand all the way through the day. Uh, when it starts to dry up, if there just aren't that many buyers around, you see these reversals. And uh, Ultimate Software Group did the uh, same thing. Another great quarter of growth with earnings up 50% from a year ago. Sales were up 23% to 79.2 million, uh, but the stock has uh, reversed, has given back uh, pretty much all of its gains. Uh, still up 3.5% on the day to 92.63, but uh, it hit an intraday high of 99.09. So uh, Ultimate Software Group uh, disappointing uh, price action today for this uh, enterprise. Um, enterprise software firm. So that's uh, ultimate uh, software. Take a look at uh, Comcast. Comcast, um, you know, big liquid large cap name here. Um, you know, performing uh, well today. Gap up in price up a little more than 3% to 33.58. Uh, Comcast is um, a cable provider, of course, and uh, their results were fueled by um, addition of new internet and phone customers. Uh, that helped offset weakness at its NBC Universal unit. Comcast added 156,000 internet uh, subscribers and 158,000 phone customers. So stocks a little bit extended here. You know, when you're investing in growth stocks, uh, you always want to be careful not to chase. I think uh, you'd be chasing uh, Comcast up here. Uh, Short-term support here at the $31 price level. Uh, if the market comes in, uh, look for it to find support uh, down there. But despite a gap up today, I would not, uh, I would not be chasing the stock uh, up here. Let's take a look at uh, Allergen, A-G-N, or Allergan, I believe. It's not a soft uh, G. Uh, kind of a, this is another stock that may have been affected by uh, this night, uh, the night trading debacle, debacle today where uh, some bad orders went through, but Allergan uh, hit uh, a high of 91.94, a low of 82.81. So you're looking at a nine-point intraday uh, range here. I wouldn't be surprised to see this stock included among these 150 that are being looked at by the NYSE, but Allergan uh, up 4.7% uh, today to 85 uh, 8593 uh, and that's uh, that's another earnings uh, story and then let's take a look at, as well at CTRX Catamaran Catamaran Corporation remember this uh, stock used to be known as SXC Health Solutions has been under a lot of pressure look at that 50 day moving average could be resistance for now uh, Catamaran uh, Corporation is a provider of pharmacy benefit management services PBM uh, provider Another strong grower here, annual earnings this year should be up 43% from 2011. 2013, that growth is expected to accelerate up 50% to $3.49 a share. Uh, excellent growth in recent quarters, another strong quarter this time around, but uh, yeah, it looks a little vulnerable here. It's, it's just a base building stock, and 
Uh, you know, anytime a stock is underneath that 50-day moving average for the base to properly complete, the stock has got to move back above that 50-day line. Uh, it hasn't happened yet with CTRX, and uh, if it if it does, well, you've got a base that uh, will continue to take shape, and you know, you could see another breakout down the line but uh, keep in mind this is another stock that uh, would fall under the category of you know being one of these big market leaders has made a big big price move since uh, you know the the uh, March 2009 low so uh, got to be got to be careful here stock is not at a buy yet and frankly that's you know kind of an issue with the, with my screens and the growth screens that I'm looking at again I've got some long exposure in my ultimate growth stocks uh, <clears throat> model portfolio in fact uh, NCR is a uh, a holding in my uh, portfolio. You can see a nice uh, day of outperformance. Stock is up 5.8% today to 24.67. Was under a little bit of selling pressure um, uh, recently, but it has uh, bounced back uh, nicely. They're doing some uh, interesting things with their uh, pension. They're making a um, a, a lump sum uh, payment to certain former employees to uh, decrease the size of its pension liability. That should help profitability going forward, and the stock is uh, uh, benefiting as a result. But it, uh, you know, it's a difficult environment for for growth stocks. Uh, for every, you know, for every growth stock that's going higher or breaking out, there's, you know, two, three, or four that are that are going lower. So the the breadth in uh, in the growth universe uh, right now is still a bit uh, a bit shaky. I do believe I own a few stocks in the uh, portfolio that have the uh, potential to outperform going forward. But for them to succeed, you know, we're going to need to see more money come in from the sidelines. We still know there's a lot of money on the sidelines that. Uh, just waiting for some of this uncertainty to subside a little bit. Hopefully the ECB will remove a layer of uncertainty uh, tomorrow and hopefully that jobs report if we just get uh, you know if we get a hundred thousand hundred and twenty five thousand um, that could be enough to fuel uh, positive uh, sentiment here but um, it remains to be seen. It's a tough, uh, tough call. Always a tough call to see how the market is going to uh, react to uh, headlines. Harley Davidson also out with earnings today. Wild day of trading in this one uh, too. Intraday high of uh, 43.38, a low of 37.84. So about a five and a half point uh, intraday price swing here. Stock was recently trading around uh, 42.31, up near its high for the day. Still down two percent on. Uh, you know, again, earnings uh, here as well. And then let's uh, take a look at, um, mentioned weak earnings from uh, MasterCard. Let's take a look at Wright Express. This is a, a small cap name that's in the same industry group as, um, as MasterCard. It's a provider of business payment processing and uh, information management solutions. Uh, market cap of $2.3 billion. So it's a, it's a small cap, but uh, earnings, um, you know, Investors not responding positively at all to the company's earnings reports. It's down 5.2 percent to uh, let's see, 6101, trying to hold on to its 50-day. Uh, moving average here. How about these uh, 3D printing firms as well? I want to take a look at uh, Stratasys. They came out with um, uh, earnings uh, as well, and uh, let's take a look and take a look at Stratasys here. It has been a very, very strong uh, price performer. A little bit a uh, little bit extended here. Stock is under some pressure today, down 2.1% to $60 uh, a share. The earnings up 39% from a year ago. Uh, nice acceleration, two quarters in a row of accelerating sales growth at uh, uh, Stratasys. They make uh, 3D prototyping systems for a bunch of industries, aerospace, um, industrial, automotive, 49.4 um, million in uh, revenue. This is a, a stock that's uh, extended. I wouldn't uh, wouldn't buy it up here. Pickings uh, still pretty slim out there. You got to be very very discerning when uh, when buying some of these growth names. You want to be careful not to chase. And even those that are trying to show strength are, you know, having having problems uh, getting going. That's because there's still a lot of money on the sidelines, not entirely willing to come in yet. All right, folks, headed into the final break. Stick. With with me. We'll be right back. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. 
Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago based exchange. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, Kate Stalter, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Would you like a personal update from Tom O'Brien as to what equities he's trading and what his daily trading plan is before the market opens each morning? Every market day, Tom O'Brien sends out his daily newsletter, Market Insights, to hundreds of subscribers that rely on his daily recommendations when it comes to navigating these highly volatile markets we're dealing with. As recently as May 21st, Market Insights subscribers closed out all five open positions for a combined profit of over 68% in one day. Profits ranged from 6.5% to over 24%, and all of these trades had been initiated within the previous 30 days. Now is the perfect time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's explosive trading newsletter, Market Insights, an $85 value. Tom breaks down the market each morning with his market take and provides trade recommendations, including precise stops and target profit zones, leaving nothing left to guessing. Log on to TFNN.com today and sign up for your two-week free trial. Make sure you're a subscriber the next time Market Insights subscribers close out multiple winning trades. Take action and sign up for your free trial today. Put the power of the Chapman Wave methodology to work for you. No matter what market you trade, what time frame you trade in, or your trading style, the opening call, Basil Chapman's daily market newsletter, is bursting with the information and trades you need to become a more successful trader. I've been using Basil Chapman's Chapman Wave methodology for several years now. His Chapman Wave can be used for any time period for not only equities, but futures, currencies, commodities. I've been also a subscriber of his opening call, which I find an invaluable tool to help me analyze the potential of the market each day. He gives you opportunities to go short and long. It includes recommendations on stocks. I strongly recommend people using the Chapman Wave and very, very strongly support the use of his opening call. To find out more about Basil Chapman and his Chapman Wave methodology, and to get your two-week free trial of the opening call, a $64 value, visit TFNN.com today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows. Plus, see all the charts as they happen live during those shows and have access to archives of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, founder and CEO of TFNN, professional trader and educator, also a special guest on CNBC, analyzing the commodity markets. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. Uh, five minutes left to go in Wednesday's uh, session. NASDAQ uh, composite back near its uh, session low. Tried to get something going late in the day here, but uh, only down 13 points, uh, half a percent to 29.26. So tech tech remains uh, under, under pressure here. Can't uh, give up on it yet, though. But um, the Dow, uh, different story with the Dow and the S&P 500. They're uh, mostly unchanged on the day, down just a little bit. The Dow is down uh, 10 points now, one-tenth of 1% uh, 1 to 12,998. So it actually has given up that 13,000 level. The S&P 500, as we head into the close here, 
uh, just down about a point and a half to uh, 1377. So um, S&P 500 technically still uh, doesn't uh, doesn't look uh, too bad here at all. The big question mark is the um, the Nasdaq Composite and the Nasdaq 100. Are they going to be able to provide leadership uh, for this market? I think we'll have a pretty good idea of that uh, sometime tomorrow or Friday. So, uh, taking a look at a couple of other uh, weak performers here. Um, again, illustrating you know just the um, difficult environment. Again, NetSuite. You'd have to think that this uh, stock was part of this uh, night capital uh, trading debacle earlier in the day. The NYSE has uh, uh, identified about, um, or Knight Capital, I should say, has uh, uh, identified about 150 NYSE stocks. Uh, would be surprised if NetSuite was not in this group uh, as well. It's probably a lot more than 150 stocks, but uh, NetSuite, you can see a hugely volatile day of uh, trading here. Stock is down 2.9 percent to 53.72. Big gap up for NetSuite. Uh, last Friday, company reported very, very strong earnings. Been talking about this one because it's just a you know good, uh, good solid heavy volume move, but uh, just volatility in, in spades in, in recent days. NetSuite is a uh, provider of on-demand customer relationship management uh, software, similar business to uh, Salesforce. NetSuite also does enterprise resource planning uh, software, but a uh, very volatile day. I really wouldn't even know where to start doing technical analysis on this stock with its uh, the way it's uh, traded today. Just a tremendous volatility in shares of uh, NetSuite. Check in on uh, LinkedIn ahead of earnings uh, tomorrow. Again, LinkedIn looking extremely vulnerable here. Look at this stock down $6.30. 30 cents, uh, six percent on the day to 96. Uh, 36. It has uh, given up its 50-day moving average with uh, conviction today. Uh, earnings uh, tomorrow expected to be up uh, 60 percent to 16 cents a share. Sales up 78 percent to 215.7 million. Would not be surprised to see a strong quarter from this company, but technically the stock is not looking all that healthy right now. Uh, LinkedIn, they make money from three business segments. Hiring solutions, that makes up a little more than half of their uh, revenue. Marketing solutions, uh, close to a third. And uh, premium subscriptions, about 20 percent or so. So we'll see what LinkedIn has to say uh, tomorrow after the close. Don't forget, uh, folks, Ultimate Growth Stocks model portfolio starting to show some signs of life here despite a, uh, a fairly difficult environment for growth stocks uh, still. When new money starts to come in from the sidelines, when uh, institutional money starts being put to work, whether that uh, happens because of uh, a bond market sell-off or uh, who knows, we just have uh, less uncertainty in the market, new money is going to come in from the, from the sidelines, and uh, that's when your growth stocks are really going to start to to shine. There have been some good performers uh, lately. If you want to uh, check out a uh, trial, 30-day free trial to Ultimate Growth Stocks, you can do that right on the homepage of TFNN.com. Right in the carousel there, Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. You can also uh, click on the Newsletters tab on the homepage and then click on Investment uh, Newsletters. Coming up uh, after the close, let's uh, check in on shares of uh, DaVita. They're going to be coming out with um, uh, earnings. DaVita operates uh, kidney dialysis centers, uh, has made a big, big price move. So a lot of good news priced into this stock. Also, uh, Live Person, LPSN. Intrepid Potash, IPI, Sturm Ruger, RGR, and Thoratec, T-H-O-R, all due after the close with earnings. Have a great afternoon. We'll see you back here tomorrow, folks, 3 Eastern. Take care.